curious, do you think, because probably my view of it is, I agree with you, kids kids are going to be who they're going to be mm. up until a certain age and beyond if able. And, and you're right, you probably can't necessarily like mold a kid and change them as much as we'd like to, but I feel like you can kind of like crush it, right? Like you can crush their spirit yeah. potentially mm -hmm. and change who they are and make that loud kid now quiet for, for whatever reason. Do, do you agree with that? Do you think like that that ability is there to like fundamentally change them through that? Yeah. yeah, I think that th those would be the adverse childhood experiences, right. you know, whatever trauma they experience, whether big or small, like there are so many conversations that I remember from being a kid that just like absolutely crushed me. But yeah. like as an adult, I think some of those things could have been avoided. Some of them, like I can look back and be like, oh, my mom was working two jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like she was really stressed. And um yeah, I can see that perspective now, but I think, yeah, there was definitely moments that crushed me. Um, but I think that that is the power in teaching your kids resilience and teaching them the language for their emotions and teaching them like, hey, you can tell me that I hurt your feelings. Because then when, you know, you have an abusive partner, you can tell them that they hurt your feelings mm. and you can teach your kids that they deserve more and that they can fight for more and that they can be their own advocate in that way because they can be their own advocate with you as well. Mm. Yeah. It's their first kind of rep at doing that. I like that a lot. I'm going to ask the devil's advocate question, not because I disagree, but because I, 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 I hope that's true. And I want to try and pressure mm -hmm. test it as best I can. Do you worry about any adverse side effects, consequences of, of that approach. If maybe if you go too far, maybe just in general, where if if you you teach kids too much to be in touch with who they are, what they are, maybe that maybe they're too emotional or they're too in touch with their emotions in some way. Or somebody might like I think about this a lot. Like the idea of being vulnerable, I think is super important and, and something that's super critical. But is there a risk in that? That if you're if you're too vulnerable, um maybe it maybe it um and like you're, well, I guess let me not say vulnerable. Let me say it another way. If you're too forgiving of yourself and who you are and say, well, this is just me. And that's, I, I shouldn't have to apologize for that. I definitely see the value in that. But there's a risk if you go too far that maybe there are things that could be better about you. Maybe there are things that you should know about yourself that you don't, that are inconvenient truths or something like that. And you run the risk of never identifying those. So just examples. But do you think there are any potential adverse effects to raising a kid that way? I think multiple things <laughs> so um touching on um making a kid too emotional everyone is super emotional e every single person is super emotional they're either going to stuff it down have excuses for it cope with it in an unhealthy way whatever it is e every single person on earth is super emotional like mm. i can go through a million emotions in a day like that's just how it goes you're, and you're going to be interacting with other people who make you feel certain things with every conversation that you're in. So everyone's emotional. Um, and I think it's powerful to teach a kid that they can be emotional, but learn how to process that internally and teach them how to communicate what they're feeling in a constructive mm. way. That's super powerful. Um, as far as... Um, making them too vulnerable. Uh, I think Brené Brown, she's a vulnerability mm -hmm. researcher. Yep. So oh, okay. she talks about how um, the people who are happiest are the most vulnerable. Mm. Um, and they're also the ones with the best boundaries mm. because they know that like, this is the limit to which I'm gonna let myself be vulnerable. And if that's not accepted, I learned setting up a boundary here, moving on. Mm. Um, and I think that there's courage in that. I think that um, being someone who is vulnerable, you don't want to be around the people who are going to be shitheads to you. Mm. <laughs> and, and I think that that is something that's a lesson that you would teach your kids, right? Like, oh, you, you were vulnerable and they were mean to you. Um, no matter what they're going through in their lives, they're not processing their emotions properly. Can I ask a question there? Because again, I agree with you. So I want to explore it a little bit. Do, yeah, for sure. It can get tricky sometimes 
So, so I totally agree, right? There's shitheads out there. There's mean people, <laughs> yeah. but that's that's also subjective, right? And that depends can depend on perspective, right? You you can imagine mm -hmm. somebody who maybe is doesn't have as much clarity, isn't as emotionally stable, mm -hmm. seeing somebody who's just giving them constructive criticism as a bad person or a shithead, and like and, and impacting them. Even for somebody who is, you know, has some clarity, is 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 willing to be vulnerable, it can be tricky to navigate that and to tell when is that person being an asshole and when are they actually trying to help me. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you think about managing that right? Because I don't think it could be a one size fits all where it's like if somebody is mean to me in some way immediately that person's gone. I don't think, but curious, curious your take on it. I think that the one size fits all is communication okay. <laughs> and teaching your kid healthy communication, okay. teaching them this person is being a shithead to you when you were vulnerable. Mm. Ask them questions. Mm. You know, like tell them, hey. Like your response to how I expressed this emotion really hurt my feelings. Mm. Or I, I really don't think that um, was the way that you intended to handle it. I don't know, but I'm not feeling really good about that conversation. Like teaching them that it's okay to stand up for themselves in those conversations. And like, oh, maybe that person was having a bad day. Mm. And you can only know that by asking them questions, not by assuming, oh, maybe that person had a bad day. Like there's that line of codependency, right? Like yeah. everyone teaches you like, oh, maybe that person had a bad day. And it's like, maybe he's not having a bad day and he's just mean. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have to you have to figure that out for yourself. And the only way that you can do that is by asking questions, being present, having those conversations. And if it's someone that is you know closer to you, those conversations are easier. If it's a stranger, those conversations can be more passive. Like I work in customer service, right? If someone is being terrible to me, I'm like, I know, I'm sorry, I'm, that's frustrating. And they're like, yeah, it is frustrating. And you like get that confirmation and yeah. it's a lot more passive, a lot quicker. But at that moment, I'm like, okay, they're frustrated. It's not necessarily directed towards me. And a lot of times people will realize it like in their tone, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, thank you for handling this for me. So sorry that I was mean, whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's also assuming that like people are doing the best they can. And that's another Brené Brown thing. Like she talks about like, assume that everyone is doing the best they can. So even if they are being shitheads, they're doing the best they can. And maybe you don't want that around you, mm -hmm. but like that understanding that that's all that they could give you is also freeing because there's nothing you could have done to get a different reaction. You couldn't mm -hmm. have been vulnerable in a different way to get something else because that is the conversation that you had. That is the best that they could do in that moment. And you can't change that. Yeah, 